This is Ryan Elliott for Boxer Social Association with Betfred. We're in the very noisy Miami. I've managed to hunt down Simon Minter. Simon, it seems I'm always bugging you at these things, but how you been? Yeah, not too bad. Um, just, you know, enjoying Miami. I only got here yesterday, so a little jet lagged, but yeah, it's, it's nice. Very loud. Yeah. Remember the last time you and I saw each other at an event, obviously KSI, Logan Paul, we were sat there saying, how on earth did this all come to pass? Once again, we find ourselves posing the same question. Do you think even maybe Anise and Gibb is surprised that we're sat here this week? I think Gibb is extremely surprised. I think everyone is, because when this first started, Jake and Logan were both saying how obviously they don't need this fight against KSI. Jake is now fighting Anise and Gibb. I love Gibb. Gibb is one of the nicest people in the world. He makes amazing content. But I really don't know how this has happened. No one, no one could have predicted this happening six months ago, let alone before the boxing started. We'll come on to this fight a bit more, but as I mentioned, the last time I saw you was in Los Angeles. Saw you all in the build-up for the fight, enjoying yourselves, and then obviously, when the result was announced, the whole of the British YouTube scene went absolutely bananas, including yourself. You all had a little fun time away in Vegas after that. Sum up for me, if you can, your emotions that night, and the partying and the fun that followed as well. Honestly, um... I hated it. <laughs> I, I, like, obviously, until the result came through, until they announced that JJ had won, I, that is, I think I get more nervous than JJ somehow. And I don't know why, because obviously I have full faith in him. I know he, he can, anything he sets his mind to, he will be incredible at. But obviously boxing is, you know, anyone could win. One lucky punch could end it all straight away. So yeah, that, that night was horrible. But as soon as I heard United Kingdom, that was, that, I think that is one of my best moments in my life. And it's nothing to do with me, it's his accomplishment, it's everything. But I think that's one of my favorite moments in my entire life. So, Vegas was good. We went out there, it was just like uh, the close, like close knit of uh, guys that went, plus girlfriends and, you know, uh, JJ's team and everything. It was, yeah, a lot of fun, very messy. But we've recovered and now we're here again to hopefully go and celebrate again. In your opinion, has Jake taken this as a stepping stone? Do you think he's already looking past Gibb and trying to eye up JJ there? I think so. Uh, I think a, a bit controversial here. I think even DAZN have. Because yeah. uh, they posted a picture which was like a uh, winner against Deji and then this current one next opponent and it was uh, JJ. So it's kind of like I think everyone's writing off Gibb way before they see what he's capable of. Now, you and I have spoken about the brotherhood that JJ and Vidal had. I'm sorry, I'm sure people are catching your eye here. Ethan's behind. Ethan's already done his. Yeah, uh, so we were talking about in the build-up for that case, I fight, the, the bond between him and Vidal, how important that brotherhood is when you're going through something as grueling as a training camp with so much pressure on. Same thing here with Gib. Gib has been working with Vidal since he just went down to the gym to lose some weight. How important do you think that bond is between them two? Well, obviously, JJ spent a lot more time with Vidal because he had his fight, but now that... Gib has spent more time with Vidal. I mean, Gib was the original, um, I don't know what the right word is. He was the first person to be trained by Vidal. So they obviously have, I think those three are the, the closest knit and obviously Gib uh, sparred with JJ a lot. So Vidal was still hanging out with him then. Yeah, the, those guys are like, it's the same as JJ and Vidal. They're, they're like brothers. So that bond is gonna be very important in terms of this fight. You know Gibb better than I. When I spoke to Cal Freezy, he told me, Anise and Gibb has a screw loose. He's not going to stop coming. He's like his team train. Would you agree? Yeah, Gibb is possibly the... He's, in terms of our, on YouTube, he's the most mental person I've met. He, he just goes off on one randomly, and it's... Yeah, it's, it's... It shows in his content, to be fair. It works in his favour, because his content is some of the best out of everyone I know. It's just a little bit off sometimes but that's what you need when you're in a ring with someone else trying to punch you this seems to almost be a free hit for Gibb as you and I were saying it, it, I don't think he expected to be in this situation at all he's here he's put the work in if you could could you sum up though for Jake Paul what's on the line here a lot of the boys have been suggesting that Jake Paul's career is on the line here do you agree I mean I'd like to agree but at the same time he he likes to say he's obviously got you know, shares of YouTubers, uh, channels, he's got businesses, blah, blah, blah. Even if he was to continue YouTube, in reality, he can still pull 500K to a million to two million views a video. 
I mean, that's what I do. So, uh, and I'm not saying my career's over. So, I don't think his career's over. I just think he needs it to take his career where he wants it to go. But it's definitely not over. Whereas Gibb, if he wins, his career is gonna, you know, expand tenfold kind of thing. So he has a lot more to gain. Gibb has a lot more to lose. With the whole YouTube boxing sort of crossover, a lot of people thought that would be the natural conclusion after what we saw in Los Angeles. Huge event, good outcome for you guys. Did well by all means. We are here again, there's a lot of interest. Do you think the natural conclusion of this whole thing is coming though, maybe after this fight? Do you think maybe we should leave it there? I think so personally. I think if Gibb wins, I don't see another fight that could happen. Because realistically, Gibb and JJ won't ever fight. There is no one else stepping up that's one big enough, two talented enough at fighting unless they could show it. So, I mean, if Jake wins, um, then yeah, I guess he would want to fight JJ and that's probably the last fight I could see. That's, yeah, that, I think it is coming to a conclusion. With Vidal, uh, he, he made a bit of noise a couple of weeks ago. He, he tweeted that regardless of the outcome of this fight, he's done with coaching now. He wants to just focus on his boxing career. Do you think that that's about fair now that he can focus on himself and put all this behind him after all the involvement he's had? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Vidal is only just starting his actual boxing career. And I genuinely think, I agree with JJ, obviously. JJ knows him a lot closer. But I genuinely think he could be a world champion one day. Um, he just obviously needs to start. So doing these is obviously good for his, um, you know, his social media following and his presence. He's just, I think by the time this probably goes out, he's probably hit a million subscribers, which is mad. Um, feel free to check out his channel. And yeah, I think now he just needs to turn that into, you know, his boxing career and take both of them in stride. And yeah, I think it's a good time for him to retire from coaching and give it a few years and you'll see him fight for heavyweight titles. Not heavyweight, that was a mistake. Titles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, obviously we saw all of you guys sort of sharing that emotion after JJ won in Los Angeles. There's a real communal feeling, a tight-knit feeling amongst the UK YouTube scene. Can you just sum that up for me compared to say what the American YouTubers have? It seems like all you guys coming out here, you're all out here again together, sort of grouping together, having a few drinks, being bothered by us. <laughs> Has it got that sort of family feeling amongst all of you? Yeah, I think so. Um, I don't want to slate the American side of YouTube. I, it's obviously a lot bigger than ours. Uh, so obviously people in you know New York or Miami even aren't going to know the people from LA as well. Whereas the UK is so small that we know each other really well. But at the same time, I do also feel like we are a lot closer in terms of... I mean, I, I've seen a couple of YouTubers here, American YouTubers here, supporting Jake. They might turn up to the fight, but you know that's it. They turn up to the fight, they leave. Whereas I feel like everyone that's here from the UK is very supportive of each other. And, you know, I, I'd like to think anyway, if, if I had a fight or something like that, everyone here would turn up for that. If any one of these guys had a fight, everyone would turn up for that. So I think we are a lot, um, a lot closer, but I think that is to do with size of the country and also the type of content we make, because we all make very similar content. Whereas, I don't know, I don't, it's hard to explain, yeah. but I, yeah, hopefully you understand. Well, a couple more, Simon, before you, I let you get back to why you're actually here to enjoy your holiday and to see your friends. I appreciate your time. A couple of the other like other guys, I was talking to them about Ethan earlier, about how ahead of the last fight, he came over here as a fan. He was roped into a Sky Sports interview for five minutes and ended up being a pundit for the week. Yeah. He's here working for DAZN on American sort of platforms now, sort of spiraled out. No, how proud are you of him and how he sort of managed to fulfill that role as well and got so much positive feedback? Yeah, I think it all started obviously with the weight loss. He just became so much more confident. And then as soon as you put him in front of a camera and talking about something that he knows very well, i.e. boxing, he just he just blossomed. And now, I mean, you look, you go talk to him now. I don't know if you've spoken to him yeah. today, but he's just completely, I don't want to say different because it makes him sound like he's changed in a bad way. He's he's just way more confident and he's way more, yeah, it's, it's inspiring to see because it is a case of, He's, he started off just, you know, oh, I'll go to the gym, I'll lose a bit of weight. Now it's turned into his whole lifestyle. He's, um, yeah, he's, he's just, he's done incredible in, in only about a year now. So, yeah, it's, it's inspiring. Now, there's been a bit of a correlation among the sidemen predictions, and I've asked everyone. I'm going to leave it with you, Simon, to tell me what the hell you think we see tomorrow night, because I've got no idea personally. Jay Paul and Ethan Gibb, tell me what happens, please. Well, I mean, we predicted it over on more Sidemen, if you want to check out that channel, just saying. Um, <laughs> but 
I mean, I'm not going to sit here and go, you know, Jake's going to win. I think, I think Gibb is going to win. I have full faith in him. I'm thinking round four or five TKO. No, it's not, it's not going to be a full knockout. I think the ref will stop it. Probably due to... I, I think he actually will get a lot of blood coming from Jake's nose. Because like, he's had a lot of surgeries on it. Yeah, round four or five, TKO, Gib. Well, Simon, thank you for kindly volunteering to come on the channel as always. I promise I don't kidnap him. Don't worry, everyone. All, always a pleasure. I'll let you have the mic back. One final word. Uh, next time, I'm going to try and do this before a couple of drinks. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your week.